Hey, good Saturday morning, guys. So today, uh, we're going to get back on the regular cab project. Uh, status from yesterday is got the bed off and started assessing a couple things back here. Definitely going to need a little bit of help. We got quite a bit of crustiness, and that's that's not going to fly. So we're going to have to do some bracing back here, which I planned on doing anyways, because, you know, you don't put a bunch of power through a frame that can't handle it. So I uh, got the bed off. And so the bed's over here. Uh, this is, uh, I think I said this before, but this thing's going to go to the yard here pretty quick. So I don't really have any plans for it other than maybe if there's any good panels on it, I might cut them out just to save them for if, uh, if this thing ever needed any work or got hit or something like that. But uh, that's, that's my plan with this. I think, honestly, the only good panel might be that right there there's no dents and dings in it so maybe cut that out and save it but honestly that might be worth uh that might be more time than it's worth so uh that's off and then on the truck this morning um i'm gonna start trying to figure out how to pull the cab on this i probably could have watched some videos last night but i didn't so got the grill off uh that's just some clips and one bolt and then uh got the the cool thing about these GMT 800s, if you don't know it, is this is where your hood hinge normally goes. And then if you use this hole back here that's already drilled, they call this like the service position. And so uh, if I can stand back here, the hood is like straight up and down. So like my lights are actually shining in there. I don't need an under hood light to work. And it takes like less than, I don't know, uh, a minute or two to do it so that's what i did uh, i'm hoping to disconnect like the cab and then the fenders from the core support and literally pick the cab up with the fender still on it because uh, that way i can just get the frame ready because the the next step in this build is to get the frame to the sandblaster and so i can take care of the rest of the cab when the frame is out from underneath the uh, the cab so i'm just going to try and pull it as in one piece as I can and then take the pieces off later versus uh, trying to put a bunch of pieces all over the ground while I'm working on it. So uh, that's where I'm starting and then I'll pick back up with you guys when I make some more progress. All right, so we're about uh, 20, 30 minutes into the day here and uh, I decided to lift the truck up. We got all four of the cab bolts free, not out because uh, the front two, there's one of them. Uh, just snapped off they're like disintegrated i'm not sure what the hell is going on there but um you can see the rush shower that i just took which doesn't actually look as bad on camera but there's a boot print right there so you can tell where i was standing uh so the four cab bolts are out and then they got these uh they got these grounds i would assume chassis grounds they're pretty big uh did, took those two out in the back and then now i'm just kind of continuing my uh inspection here to see what's gonna have to what's gonna have to be free for me to pick up this cab so i know of course um there's some of the large wiring like this that's gonna need to come free because that's attached to the chassis so i'll need to stay there but it's attached to the fender which is going to go with the cab so i'll need to tackle that and then i know there's the shift cable somewhere in here which i think um, is this guy. I'm fairly certain it is. So I'm going to have to pop that guy off so that that can go with the cab and not stay with the, with the transmission here. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to just keep plugging away and see what, uh, see what we can mess up and what we can't. All right. So it's a little bit of a mess and I've never really taken one of these apart fully, uh, by myself, but this is the fuse block for the entire truck. And this white grayish white big square plugs into back here and so this is for the cab so this part goes into the cab right there and I got a little blue wire that connects this one and we got the red one that connects the side of the fuse box what else we got in here um I think that's aftermarket that's not OEM this goes to the cruise control right there um, this guy, I don't know exactly where this goes, but I'm pretty sure this is like brake and taillights because its connector goes down underneath the brake booster. Um, and so that's pretty much all of it. And I think 
I guess we'll find out. Uh, there's a couple other ones. There's this big purple one that plugs in down there at the bottom. And this one the, with the blue on it, that one comes in over here on the side. So, um, like I said, I think I have everything for the cab uh, isolated from the rest of the chassis. And so, um, of course, hopefully we lift this thing up and we don't pull too many wires, but I'm going to be looking for that as we're lifting it up. So next thing I'm going to do is, uh, I think since I got that disconnected, uh, I'm going to get the rest of this that's staying with like the engine for now, um, unbolted from the fender, get separated from the fender because the fenders are going to come with the cab. And then, uh, the other thing I got to do is I got to disconnect like the fenders from the core support because the core support will stay with the frame. So, um, yeah, that's what we're looking at and, uh, pick back up in a little bit. So small progress update. Um, I was working on the driver's side because I knew that, I know that this is the hardest side with the fuse box and all that stuff. So started to get that free, got the battery tray out and then uh, I started to take the bolts out for the fender and I'm like, wow, that's not moving at all. Um, so then I realized that and remembered that there's bolts down here, of course, and not just at the top. So I'm trying to get the fenders free. Um, and so to get that bolt out, you gotta get the bumper off. So we have wheel well liners out, bumper off, and then uh, I'm gonna start, like I said, uh, got fender flares off too. So you can see this truck is, uh, they, those are not OEM flares and uh, it's not helping, not helping its case. So this is uh, some of the worst rot I've ever seen back in here. But uh, yeah. I'm going to be sweeping for a while. So this side, surprisingly, I think this fender's probably been replaced at some time because this is in pretty good shape. The rest of the truck on this side was not in very good shape. And someone did do rocker panels at one point in time. So maybe they did a fender too. But uh, this is starting to get a little rot as well. So I'm not going to use any of this. I think that's all going to be scrap metal. So... Alrighty, picking back up with you. I am not exactly sure where I left off, but we have, we uh, evacuated the Freon out of the system with the uh, approved machine and uh, disconnected the AC lines, moved the coolant bottle over because I haven't drained the coolant system just yet, pulled out the air box, pulled off the engine cover. Um, I got disconnect heater hoses and it looks like that ground right there. And disconnected the brake line, disconnected the steering shaft. Um, and then I gotta do a parking brake too, cause I totally forgot about that. So I got a couple things holding me up, but uh, other than that, um, core support is free on its own so that the fenders can move. And uh, I got uh, really crunchy, I would say, lift points. That freaking parking brake cable is strong. Um, but other than that, everything seems to be moving good. So this is uh, probably where I call it for today because I got some dinner commitments and stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to make a little list of the things I see right now that need to come apart. And then uh, we'll probably probably hit it hard tomorrow and hopefully we got a cab hanging in the air. So pick back up with you guys whenever we get to that point.